Good evening. My name is Ricky, Minister Ricky Morris. And I'm Nanda Morris. And together we are Eliaship Ministries. Uh, we want to give you some understanding of what the word Eliaship means. Uh, uh, it, it means that God will restore. Uh, the Almighty God that created the heavens and the earth uh, has a desire in his heart to restore mankind from his fallen position that sin put us in and to put us back into the original intent and purpose that God created mankind for which is to give him glory and honor in the earth. So we want to let you know that God's intent is to rescue us, is to recover us, and to put us back and retrieve us from the hand of the enemy and put us back into our original condition and state. So with this in mind, beloved, God called us, Ricky and Nanda Morris together, to come and to impart into your life through the preaching of the gospel, the truth of his word, what his plan was for us from the beginning of time to restore us back into fellowship, into relationship with him, to a position of power and authority, which we had from the beginning, but when mankind fell, we lost that. But Jesus came and restored it to us, but we must receive it. So we impart unto you the the peace, the prosperity, the purpose, and the plan of God huh, through the preaching of the gospel that you can become all that God has called you to be huh, in Jesus name. So beloved, we want you to sit back tonight, relax, get your pen, get your paper, call a friend and tell them that it's time for restoration. You be blessed. Greetings, beloved, and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2011. This is the good day. The Lord has made it, and I'm glad you're here. Well, I know some of you thought you might never get to this year. You might never see this year. It might be a year that uh, you've been going through and that you just said, oh, this has just been so hard in 2010. I'll never make it to next year. But God has been faithful. <laughs> He's been faithful to us. He's been faithful to you. He's been faithful to his people and for that we owe him praise huh, and glory now let's just pray because the lord has some things that he wants to talk to us about tonight huh, and i'm glad you're here so let's get in the presence of god so that we can give him give you the word that he has for you today lord we thank you we praise you huh? we bless you and we thank you for this year huh? we thank you that this is a new year that we've never seen huh? we thank you that you shut doors that no man can open huh? and that you've opened doors for us huh, that no man can shut. Huh. Now, God, open our ears that we can hear. Huh. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts. Huh. Oh, huh. oh, that we can receive huh, what the Spirit has to say to the church. Huh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, there is a word huh, from the Lord this year for us to open the year with. It's not a word about the significance of numbers. I know many people people will be talking about uh, 20 and the double and 11 and the ones and all of that. But God is not interested in that right now for us this year. What God has is a word that he gave me uh, in, uh, in um, July 8th, on um, July 8th of 2010, he gave me this word. Huh? And he told me at that time that I needed to begin to share that word huh, with the people of God so that they could begin to prepare themselves huh, oh, for the things to come in this year and in the year to come. Huh? God is getting ready to do some devastating things. Huh? And he wants his people to be prepared. Huh? He said he will never never do anything huh, unless he first reveal it huh, unto his prophet. Huh. So I'm not standing as a prophet. I'm standing as the voice of God, huh, one that God speaks to and speaks through. Huh. So you need to put your ears on so you can hear what the spirit has to say unto the church. This is what the Lord said. Huh. He said, begin to store up. He said, begin to store up for desolation and devastation. Huh. Famine and plague are coming. Huh. He said, prepare yourself before for the work of the Lord is near. He said he will not meet us like a man, but he will meet us like a, a man of war. He said, for the iniquity of our land is full and that there must be punishment for the things that we have done. He said he will punish their sin and the blasphemous ways that they have set before his face. He said he's going to plunder the spoils of the wicked and dash their dreams in sunder. He said then they'll know that he 
is the Lord. Uh, then they'll know that he is the righteous one. Uh, he's going to bring the counsel of the mighty to naught. Uh, and he's going to cause rivers to cease uh, and waters to flow. Uh, he said he makes the rain come and go. Uh, and he will work uh, and who will let him. Uh, for he is the mighty one. He is the Lord, uh, the most high God. Uh, so he said, prepare yourself. Uh, he said, get in a hurry uh, and get ready for the day cometh. Uh, for the sin of the nation is before me uh, and I will not hold back my wrath. Uh, but he said, but I will save my remnant. Uh, uh, this is a word for somebody today. Uh, oh, God said, wherever you are right now in your relationship with him, uh, you need to build upon that. Uh, if you've been low, you need to come up higher. Uh, if you've been high, you need to get higher than you are right now. Uh, you need to draw close to God. Uh, you need to begin to trust him like you never trusted God before. Uh, oh, God got a word for you today. He said, those who fear his name, he will protect them. He will preserve them. He said, I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. So you need to prepare yourself, beloved. God wants us to begin to store up some things, to begin to even put up some food and some, and some money aside. Don't spend every nickel and dime you get. You got to tuck something away. You got to keep some and don't put it all in the bank. Oh, because you might go to the bank and the bank will be closed but put some money in your house put it in your sock like the old people used to do you might have to lift up the floorboard or open your mattress up and tuck your money inside of there but God said you need to begin to store up you need to begin to prepare yourself for his judgment is coming oh the day of the Lord his visitation is at hand and he said prepare my people so they won't be caught off guard we need to get ready huh, for whatever the Lord is getting ready to do. Huh. I've heard other people say it. Huh. I've heard them confirm the word that he gave me. Huh. So I'm not off guard. Huh. I'm not off season. And we are in the hour where the Lord's hand huh, oh, will be shown in the earth, will be shown in our nation. The sin of this nation is great. Huh, and God wants his people to be ready. So beloved, take heed. Take heed to the voice of the Lord huh, and get ready and prepare yourself. Act accordingly and share this word with anybody, huh, anybody and everybody that you know so that they can be ready. God don't want us to be caught off guard. He always lets us know things that are happening ahead of time. Now, when I was preparing for this broadcast uh, some time ago, the Lord gave me this word for you because this word ties into the word that he gave me earlier, the one that we just heard. This word ties in because many of us have been going through 2010 might have been a hard year for many people. I've been getting so many calls about people just going through trial and tribulation and they lost their job and they, they've lost their homes and, and they've lost family and loved ones walked away because they didn't have all that they thought they should have had. But I want to tell you something. Everything that you have, you're supposed to have it. And God, we got to trust God. See, this is where we are. God is trying to get the body to trust him. We talk a good talk. Oh, we say we trust God, but when trial and tribulation comes, or when famine or plague or sickness or disease, when it touches our home, we don't really trust God. We begin to look everywhere, but to look to God. And he wants, he's got to get us to trust him. Oh, beloved, we got to understand who we are. We are the kingdom citizens, citizens of the kingdom of God. One day we're rule and reign with him. If we're going to rule and reign with Jesus, if we're going to judge angels, he got to be able to trust us. He got to be able to trust us with this little bit of stuff down here. We got to show God that we trust him. So this is a word for all of us that have been going through in 2010, 2011, it may not change. I'm not going to give you no false hope. I'm not going to give you no pie in the sky word. I'm not going to give you something saying you're going to get a new house, a new car, a new refrigerator, a washer, a dryer. But I'm going to give you what the word said. Oh, the Lord told me to tell you that his favor got you in it and his favor going to get you out. Oh, God, thank you today. Thank you for your word. Now, we got to understand. Oh, sometimes we say, oh, I'm blessed and highly 
favored. Oh, I'm chosen of the Lord. Oh, it's favor all over me. We talk about favor. But what is favor? See, we have a wrong understanding of what favor is. Let's look at it. Favor means to give someone special regard. It means to treat somebody with goodwill, to show them exceptional kindness. It means to be gracious to someone. It means to show them kindness in comparison to the kindness you show to somebody else. Being favored. Being favored. But you're saying, okay, how is that? How am I being favored? And I'm going through all of this. It just doesn't make sense. But I got some for you. I got some for you. I got some for you. We're going to look at a few people that went through the same things and worse than you're going through right now. And the favor of the Lord was all over their lives. It was only because of the favor of the Lord that they made it through what they were going through. Oh, you gotta understand, there are people that went through what you went through and they didn't make it. They lost their mind. They in straight jackets right now. Oh, they on pills right now. Oh, they in the morgue, they under the ground right now and went through what you going through. You got favor on your life, the grace of God on your life. And no beloved this, that God has you here, but he's trying to bring you over there. You just going through something. When you go through it doesn't mean that you stay there. It means that you keep moving. You got to keep moving through this thing. Oh, you got to keep hoping in God. You got to keep believing. You got to keep trusting him. Look at Job. Job was significant. God said that, the Bible says that Job hated evil. He feared God. He loved him. And the favor of God was on Job's life. Because when, what happened when the sons of God all came up before the Lord, the first thing that God said to Satan was, have you considered my servant Job? I got favor all over him. And what did Satan say? I can't get to him. You got favor all over him. I can't get in. It's too high. I can't get over it. It's too low. I can't get under it. He said, well, I'm going to take a little of my favor off of him for a minute. You go on in there and see what you can do. But we know the story. No matter what Job's life went through, Job never did what Satan's plan was, was for him to curse God. He never did it. He might have asked some questions, but you see, you got to understand the whole thing of going through is a process. It's to process you. It's to process your character. It's to process some things out of you huh, that's in you that's not pleasing to God. Job went through, but he had some character issues. Job began to question God. He began to question himself. He began to question all kinds all kind of things. God worked his character issues out. And we know the story at the end, it was double for his trouble. Some of y'all, God has got double waiting, but you got to get to the end. Huh? You got to be faithful in your trial. You got to be faithful huh, in your tribulation. You got to be faithful huh, oh, when you're going through. Look at Joseph. <laughs> oh, he's a prime example. Joseph was favored from his father, I think from his womb, from his mother's womb. Joseph had a got, daddy got him a coat with many colors. He sent him, oh, go see what your brothers is doing. His brothers hated him because God's favor was on Joseph. Even when he was a young man, he would have dreams. God would show him his destiny. Some of you, God been showing you your destiny, huh? but you need to stand on that dream huh? and not give up because God is able huh? and he will make all provision for you. But you need to stand on that word. You need to stand on that dream. God is faithful to us. Joseph had dreams that his brothers, even his father, would bow down to him. Huh? Oh, that he would rule one day. But God had to take him through a process because Joseph was arrogant. Oh, he was full of himself. He was cocky, baby. He was. He had character issues like all of us. And God has to process us. You see, he's not trying to punish us. He's trying to make us like pure gold. <laughs> oh, nobody takes gold out of, out of a, a, a refiner.